dead? I'm, I'm third level and I'm dead? I don't, I don't even know. I just, forget, I'm out of here. That's it, that's it, forget it. Much better, much better. Outside, sunshine, fresh air. No computer monitors in my face. Nobody asking me for 20 pieces of silverback sinew. Just relaxed. Why do I even do this anyway? Why does anybody do this anyway? I mean, why would anybody spend hours and hours trying to get a fake pet or some kind of a strange tabard whatever? Why do people do this? Actually, I think I know this one. Ignoring things like chess, improvisational theater, and wargaming, the first real role-playing game was created in the early 1970s by Gary Gygax. All hail the mighty Gygax! Gary may not have invented the genre, but he was credited to be the first to put it into the mass market as Dungeons & Dragons. I admit this is a little before my time, very little, but even then it was groundbreaking. You have to imagine a time before computers, before cell phones and apps, before cable TV, movies on demand, or even videotapes, before video games had double-digit bid counters and soundtracks. For some of you this might be difficult, but those times sucked balls. So, anyone who wanted something to do when you were under the age of 18, you really kind of had limited options. Uh, one of those was a collective escape into interactive fantasy world known as role-playing. Sometime in the late 70s to early 80s, the first computer RPGs came out. Most were text-based adventures on green screen monitors, or they had very crude ASCII graphics. If you don't know what ASCII graphics are, it's basically uh, Australopithecine emoticons. Anyway, I suppose I'd be remiss if I didn't at least acknowledge adventure on the Atari 2600. Even if it wasn't a role-playing game, it still had a lot of the correct elements in place back in 1979. Games like that, and things like Dragon Slayer and the Ultima series, and even TSR's Advanced Dungeons & Dragons on Intellivision, uh, they were good proofs of concept to show that geeks loved these things, and we were willing to shell out lots of money for a big box of 5-inch floppies or a good Sega tape or... And before you say anything, they were called tapes. Everybody called them tapes. If you had your Intellivision tapes, your Atari tapes, your ColecoVision tapes, your Sega tapes... Yeah, I know they weren't tapes, but that's what we called them, okay? Look, I was nine, all right? What we think of now as MMORPGs can be traced back nearly as far with the old MUDs and MUCs. Uh, MUD is a multi-user dungeon, a text-based hack-and-slash that looked very similar to a lot of the console games of the time. I could give a very long monologue about MUDs, but I'll just say for now that my introduction was in college when I discovered the joys of Unix servers with 14.4 modems on them. Well, consider at the time most people had 300 or 1200 baud modems, it's amazing that... Uh, baud. You know, modems... Okay, I've lost you on BOD. Okay, BOD is an old, outdated computer term for how many bits per second a computer could handle, or I guess more correctly, the modem could handle. So you've got people who had 300 bits per second, and I think near the end they were going to 14.4K or 28.8. Uh, to put that into some perspective, the connection that you're probably using right now, if you're an average American, is about 10.5 megabits per second. Or, more correctly, we were doing stuff at less than half a percentile of the speed that you're using right now, so I don't want to hear a single thing about lag from you guys. It was also a very exclusive club. In order to get in, you had to have the site address that you got from somebody else, because you just couldn't stumble into them. And you also needed to have a working knowledge of Unix, or know somebody who did, and I'm not going to admit which end of the spectrum I was on. But the addiction level is also pretty high. Uh, many computer science majors flunked out of college in thanks to MUDs. Which kind of brings me to the point, and that is that MUD culture was pretty well set to geeks only. No jocks allowed. This is our arena. This is our glory. Yeah, you can kiss the sorority girl of the day, but come tomorrow, I'm gonna have my plus ten sort of righteous endeavors, and if I don't, I know what, I know how to get there. When the server resets, I'll just I'll just run to the side. It's, I know where it is. Which brings me to here and now. What am I doing inside? It's a gorgeous day out here. Why am I not out here doing things in the real world? Why am I sitting in front of a computer screen, staring at a monitor all day? Well, some people would argue that WoW is an addiction, and to that end, I could go into lots of stuff with that. But I'm gonna save that for another time. But I'm just a casual gamer. I don't take it that horrifyingly seriously. I don't want to hear it. Just don't say it. So, what's in it for me? Well, 
I think a lot of it has to do with the entertainment value that it provides. Let's face it, a lot of the schlock that's being produced these days by mass media sucks. Revenge of the Sequel Part 2! Yeah, thanks. Movies and television are too passive these days. We want to be part of the action. We want to be the hero. We want to sculpt so we can build it up ourselves, not have it just presented to us. Even if the storyline is scripted, we feel like we're part of the adventure in a while, so we keep coming back to it. For some people, it goes a little further than that. You know the stereotype, the soft-spoken geek who gets ridiculed a lot, not really good at sports, kind of socially awkward. Yeah, you know that guy. And he gets on something like WoW, and he becomes that other persona. He is the hero. In a way, it's almost therapeutic in that it gives someone an outlet for that success. That rare attaboy, great job. That sense of achievement. And the game even pats you on the metaphorical back for it. Uh, on the other hand, it goes back to that addiction thing. If they can't relate that success to the real world, then yeah, I don't even want to think about that. For some of us, it's just a cheap vacation from the stresses of the real world. <laughs> Reality sucks. Gas prices are high, the market's low, your job sucks, and all that other stuff. But when you log in and for a little while, you're on another world. And for the money, it's a good value in that you can't even fill your gas tank and drive somewhere for the weekend these days for the same price that a three-month pass can get you. It again. Or it could just be a heck of a lot of fun. Yeah, there, I said it. It's a lot of fun. Alright, granted, it's not nearly as interactive or as physical as some of the other sporting activities that I do, but it's still relatively inexpensive entertainment, and when it's late at night and you're looking for something to do, it's open, ready to go for you. So with that being said, I'm probably going to head back inside and go finish that quest, or at least try to. But you know what? I got half a pipe left over, and it's still a pretty nice day outside. I think the world of Azeroth can wait for a little while.